Important blood supply of bones. There are at least seven bones with very important blood supply, and I think we should know them. Fractures in these bones or dislocation of their joints can interrupt this peculiar blood supply, causing threat of death of the bone, which is called avascular necrosis of the bone. Vascular necrosis is death of a segment of bone. It may also cause delay of healing of the bone or non-union of the fractures. Fractures in these areas usually result from trauma or stress-related injuries. So if we take the talus, this is the blood supply as illustrated here. The most important blood supply of the talus comes from an artery of the tarsal canal. The artery of the tarsal canal arises from the posterior tibial artery. The deltoid branch arises from the posterior tibial artery. You should be aware that the deltoid branch of the artery of the tarsal canal it's probably the only remaining artery with displaced fractures of the tailor neck. Every attempt should be made to preserve this small but important branch. Fracture of the tailor neck will interrupt the blood supply and cause non-union of the fracture or death of the bone. In this case, it will be the body of the talus. The more displacement of the fracture, the more likely the bone will develop a vascular necrosis and the fracture will develop non-union. Hawkins sign is a subchondral radiolucent line that's seen in the dome of the talus on x-rays. Look for the radiolucent line below the subchondral bone. It's more commonly seen on the medial side and is seen on the mortis view. It is usually seen six weeks after the injury. It means there is resorption of the subchondral bone because there is vascularity. Death of the bone or vascular necrosis did not happen. The fifth metatarsal bone. You can see the arrangement of the blood supply. So if the fracture occurs in the watershed area of the blood supply, the patient may develop non-union. Fracture distal to the tuberosity will disrupt the nutrient artery blood supply, resulting in relative avascularity. Interruption of the blood supply usually causes non-union and delayed union. There are three types of fractures at the proximal fifth metatarsal. Fracture in zone 1, which is called tuberosity avulsion fracture. Fracture in zone 2, it's called Jones fracture. It compromises the blood supply, which leads to non union of the fracture. It's called Jones fracture when it occurs at the level of articulation of 4 and 5 metatarsals. The treatment is non-weight bearing with a cast or intramedullary screw. The majority of patients will have intramedullary screw. The intramedullary screw is usually done in athletes and in active individuals. If the fracture occurs distal to the articulation of metatarsal 4 and 5, the fracture is probably a result from stress and usually does not heal very well without some form of fixation. 
If the fracture occurs in the rich area of the tuberosity, which is proximal, then that fracture will heal and it's called pseudo Jones fracture. You can give the patient a boot and the patient will do very well. Jones fracture is in zone 2. Non-union of fractures in zone 2, which is Jones fracture, can occur up to 30%. In zone 3, stress fractures, always check the foot for cavoverous deformity. It can be very subtle. The scaphoid blood supply. The blood supply of the scaphoid is unique and tenuous. The main blood supply of the scaphoid comes from the dorsal branch of the radial artery. It supplies approximately 70 to 80% of the blood supply, and it occurs in a retrograde fashion. Scaphoid fractures can lead to non-union and vascular necrosis due to interruption of the blood supply. Vascular necrosis is best seen with MRI. MRI is also helpful in diagnosing occult fractures. The more proximal the fracture, the more likely the fracture may develop vascular necrosis because of the retrograde circulation. A vascular necrosis of the proximal fifth of the scaphoid occurs up to 100%. The navicular. navicular fractures are uncommon but popular. Its blood supply is unique, so the branches of the dorsalis pedis artery supply the dorsum of the navicular while the medial plantar branch of the posterior tibial artery supplies the plantar surface of the bone. The navicular tuberosity receives its blood supply from the anastomosis between these two vessels. The area where a stress fracture may occur is usually avascular. It is the central third of the navicular that is relatively avascular and has the greatest stress. There is a risk of developing avascular necrosis, non-union and delayed union when a stress fracture occurs in this area of the bone. Navicular fractures are always treated initially with a non-weight-bearing cast. Vascularity of the proximal femur and the femoral head. The medial femoral circumflex artery is the primary source of blood supply to the femoral head. Here you can see this famous artery. Damage to the medial femoral circumflex due to trauma, fractures, or dislocation may lead to a vascular necrosis of the femoral head. And this is due to interruption of the terminal branches of the medial femoral circumflex, which is different than fixing a femur shaft fracture in a younger patient, where the patient may get a vascular necrosis of the femoral head due to injury of the deep branch of the medial femoral circumflex artery. The proximal humerus. Blood supply of the proximal humerus is controversial. You have two important arteries, the anterior humerus circumflex artery and the posterior humeral circumflex artery. And they are branches from the axillary artery. You got the ascending branch of the anterior circumflex artery and the arcuate artery, which was considered 
giving the majority of the blood supply to the humeral head. The arcuate artery is the terminal branch and is still one of the primary blood supply to the humeral head. Recent studies are suggesting that the posterior humeral circumflex artery provides the main blood supply to the humeral head, so it is controversial. What is not controversial is that AVN usually occurs in four-part fracture, and in fracture dislocation of the humeral head. It can also occur in head splitting fractures or due to disruption of the medial hinge. A short calcar segment can also lead to a vascular necrosis. The vascularity of the articular segment is more likely to be preserved if more than 8 mm of the calcar is still attached to the articular segment. What is also not controversial is the fact that if there is an invasive necrosis of the humeral head, you may want also to look into the hips of the patient. The Leonate a vascular necrosis of the lunate bone is called Kimbach disease. It is usually associated with ulnar negative variance that will lead to an increased stress on the lunate area. The lunate has unique patterns of blood supply. The Y pattern, the X pattern and the eye pattern. The eye pattern is considered the one that will give the highest risk for vascular necrosis because its blood supply goes in a straight line. It's not like the X or Y that have multiple branches. Kimbach disease may be caused by repetitive trauma and the blood supply of the lunate may be interrupted. Initially, the condition feels like wrist sprain. However, if it is not recognized and treated early, the condition will progress to collapse of the lunate and arthritis of the wrist. MRI is helpful in the diagnosis of Kimbach's disease and the main procedure used to treat it when it is symptomatic and in a stage Two means you can see it in the x-ray as a sclerosis of the leonate. And when the patient has a negative ulnar variance, then you do shortening osteotomy of the radius. You shorten the radius. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.